Hey everybody, Jim the Tabletop Engineer here and welcome to a new crafting video. So I have an 11 year old son who has never played Dungeons and Dragons before and he recently, very recently, came up to me and told me that three of his friends at school had been talking about D&D and that they wanted to play. And he, you know, casually dropped in that, oh, my dad plays D&D &D and he's, he plays this thing called the Dungeon Master. <laughs> so, of course, they all said, do you think he would run a game for us? So he came home and he asked me, and, you know, come on, who's going to say no to their 11-year-old son asking to play D&D? &D? So I told him I would. And then I asked him, I said, well, you know, do you have a time frame? <laughs> And of course, they had already talked about this before talking to me, and uh, they had agreed that this Saturday, like in two days, uh, was uh, was perfect for all of them. Um, the parents even, they had, it's so funny, The parent, one of the parents contacted me and said, hey, all the kids are talking about coming to your house on Saturday. And I said, well, I said, yeah, apparently they are. I said, it's okay. Um, apparently they want to play a game and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run it for them. So they are coming over in two days. I have a full day on Friday planned that I'm not going to be able to do much of anything. So I asked my youngest, I said, well, what do you guys want to do? What do you, you know, what, what interests you? What kind of adventure are you wanting? And he said that they want to um, attack a castle. <laughs> that was what he said, attack a castle. Now I could run that theater of the mind style, but that's not me. And my son knows that. He knows I have a ton of terrain down here. Unfortunately, I do have a castle. It's a, it's a cardboard set that comes from battle systems, but that's a bit large scale for some first level characters. So I told my son, his name's Sawyer, by the way, I told Sawyer, I said, listen, do you, if you trust me, I will come up with something that I think y'all will enjoy. It won't be as grand a scale as a castle, but it'll be something fun. And he said, okay, sounds good. So what I did was I showed him some of my terrain that I have, and he liked the goblin terrain. The goblin terrain is popular with everybody, but the goblin terrain is very small. So I told him, I said, well, I could do something like that. And he said, well, you know, could you make it bigger? Sure. Not too much bigger, but I'll make it bigger. Uh, so in this video... What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I made this in under two hours. It's just a small tower, citadel, whatever you want to watch is really what it is. Uh, it uses a, a technique of foam and stone that I, I like to use in my designs. It gives it a very uh, natural, uneven look. Um, I used to do the, the, the kind with the blade where you'd cut into the foam and make brick pattern, but I've sort of gotten away from that. So... I, he has not seen this yet. I'm going to keep this hidden from him until Saturday, but I have a little mini adventure uh, that I've come up with that's going to involve this little watchtower here. It's got grass. Uh, it's been weathered. It's got a hole in the top for a ladder that I haven't made yet. So let's get to the tabletop and let me show you how I made this. Totally doable. You do not need a lot of tools to do something like this, uh, but uh, if you do have a Proxon, that will help, but not required. Let's get to the tabletop and let me show you. I started this project with some chipboard to cut the four walls of the watchtower. Each of the walls is gonna start with a rectangle of six inches by three inches, and you're gonna apply a taper to it. Now here you go, six by three, so cut four of those. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna make this little mark from the top left and the top right about one eighth inch in. It's just a little marker for you to be able to place a, a cutting edge like a metal ruler I'm doing here and start at the top and go to the bottom. The bottom will remain three inches and then the top will taper in quite a bit. Not, not a lot, but enough that it'll be noticeable. Do this on all, uh, all four of the sides of the watchtower. Then you're going to want to uh, carefully cut that taper. Start it again, start at the bottom edge or the top edge, whichever's easier, and cut that taper and be, go slow. Now, if you make any mistakes, not a big deal. The taper is, doesn't have to be exact. After you do the taper, you're going to want to add doors and windows. Now, you can do these to whatever size you like. I had a little miniature sitting there that you can see in the lower left corner that I used for scale. I made the door uh, a two inches tall 
and then I took about a half inch in on each side. And to draw the window, I started about an inch above the door frame, I drew a line that creates the base of the window, and then I added another inch on top of that, and that one inch will be the height of the window, and then I came in three quarters inches from the left and the right and drew a line, and you'll end up with this uh, window area here. Now, go ahead and cut out the door and the window on one, but you don't need to, to uh, do, the, do the dimensions or the measurements on all four pieces, because once you get a window and a door cut out, you can use that as to just trace as a template. So place it over one of the pieces and do the door and the window, and then on the other two, just do a window. Next you'll take some hot glue and a piece of scrap chipboard and just glue the bottom of the walls down to the chipboard. Don't glue the walls yet. Glue them down and then once that glue is cooled, you'll apply glue, hot glue, to one of the edges of a piece and then apply it to or press it into the taper. What you're doing is you're trying to create the watchtower so it sort of angles in from the from the bottom up to the top. Now comes the time consuming part. You're going to want a bunch of foam. I used a quarter inch thick mostly, but I did have some three quarter and one inch thick foam handy. And if you if you mix up the thickness of the stone, it will give you that 3D effect, but it's not required. And you can also do this with a blade. You don't need a proxon like what I'm using here. I just use the proxon to mostly cut down the thicknesses of the pieces, and then I would manually cut them with a blade, a hand blade, to um, to the width and height that I wanted. Again, you're going to do this a lot. I'm just making enough here just to do what I thought was one side. Once you've cut all the foam, throw it in a container. I have a container here of old Allen wrenches that I don't know what they go to anymore. And so I just shake it up for like 45 seconds. And then I take all the foam out, take all the wrenches out, then take the foam. And the foam will have this nice, rough, textured, dulled edges uh, appearance. Use some tacky glue. Don't use standard white glue. It's a little too soupy or runny. Use tacky glue because you'll have time to place the stones where you want them before it dries. And then just start placing the stones randomly. Don't, don't think about it. Just place them. Place big ones, small ones, uh, medium size, and just sort of move around and then go back and fill in the gaps later uh, with smaller pieces that you'll need to manually cut to, to fit in the little holes. Now you're gonna end up with this ugly wall like right here but don't worry, you're going to trim everything flush in a little while. Flip it over and do the opposing side. Uh, again, you may need to go back and cut more foam. I ran out. So just to tell you, I went back and did this probably four or five times to get enough foam to cut to, uh, to cover all four walls. Use a blade once the glue's dry to you know, trim flush any pieces that, that stick over. And you may have some that stick out too far on the front of a wall and just, you know, Use, use your own judgment to decide how thick you want it. Here I am covering more wall, more, more foam. Now while that glue was drying, I went and I wanted to design the top of the watchtower. It is going to be a three and a half inch by three and a half inch square. And I, I basically make this by cutting four walls and scoring them near where they touch the base at one inch high. But I determined after testing that the one inch was just too tall. So I cut it out and then I trimmed those four walls down to a half inch right here. I just realized it was too, too high. Use a blade to score. Don't cut through the, car, the chipboard and then just fold the walls up. Cut a ladder hole in before you do anything else and then use hot glue just to glue the edges together so you make this little base for where you'll be gluing the foam onto. Again, you're going to want to cut some foam and different thicknesses, different dimensions and then glue them all over the uh, the base. Before you do that, however, do add some planks. Cut some chipboard in, in different lengths and widths. I used uh, three on the top or on one side and three on the other uh, to run in, in the same direction. And then I cut smaller planks to run perpendicular to those, as you can see here, just to surround that hole, the ladder hole. Then you go and you add the foam. Forgot to record it. Sorry. And uh, I, sh I just picked up some smaller pieces to fill in the gaps, and then trimmed everything flush, as you can see here, trimmed off some pieces on the front. And then you use a combination of water and black paint to just cover the entire thing in black. The water is going to let the black get down in the gaps between the, the stones so that it covers the chipboard and any pink foam that may be visible. 
Next, I used two shades of gray. I used a dark and a light. I started with the dark and I dry brushed this all over the black. Just cover your brush in gray, wipe as much off as you care on the, uh, you know, as you can on a, on a towel, and then just sort of brush it over the black until it gets a, a color, you know, a stone color that you like. Do the top of the watchtower as well. Use a lighter gray and don't do as much dry brushing, but just hit it so it lightens the stone just a little bit more and do the top of the watchtower. After getting the top of the watchtower painted, I cut some small strips that would form the frame for the windows, and I also wanted to add doors. So basically just, I cut two pieces of chipboard to size that would fit in the door frame there, but don't glue it in yet. Uh, after I got the size fitted, I popped out the chipboard piece and I cut a bunch of small, thin chipboard uh, pieces to simulate wood planks and I glued them on the door with a slight gap between them just so it has that, that look of wood planks. Once that glue dried, I hit it with some brown and then I uh, hot glued it in uh, along with the frames for the windows. I was painting the frames first and then gluing them in and then I realized that was kind of dumb. So I just went and started gluing in the, uh, the chipboard for the frames and then I painted it. Just be careful not to get the brown paint on the stone when you do this. After the windows and doors were done, I used some alternate colors, some lighter colors, some tans, light browns, medium browns, and I just hit random stones to give it, to break up that, that dark gray stone look. After those lighter stones uh, were done, I hit them with some light gray and some dark gray dry brushing just to dull them down a bit. They were a bit too bright. I then used some hot glue to glue the entire thing down to a piece of chipboard that I cut with about a one inch uh, barrier on each side. And I covered that with some tacky glue. And then I had a mix of things like small pebbles, some grass, some, some bushes and stones. And I just glued them uh, around the edges to simulate grass and rock. After you get all the greenery uh, glued down that you like, just hit it with some watered down PVA white glue to lock it all in. Okay, so there you go. Um, I did keep time of it. I didn't keep accurate time, but it took me less than two hours. You know, starting with the, the chipboard uh, infrastructure or the inside is is so much makes it so much faster because then all you've got to do is just cut the foam. The most time consuming part, honestly, was just cutting the bricks in all these variety of sizes and thicknesses. You can shave some time off of that by just making them all different. Um, different not keep the thickness the same but keep the size different what you're going to lose if you do that is you're going to lose that 3d effect of the stones being all different thicknesses and heights and stuff like that but you can do it likewise you could just use varying thicknesses of foam but cut standard shapes like standard half inch by half inch and then maybe some half inch by one inch and then maybe some quarter inch by one inch just you know do like four or five varieties of dimensions on the on the width and the height uh, don't worry about the thickness and then glue them on and I think the 3d uh, the change in the thickness of the foam you use will uh, di will, will sort of take the eye away from noticing a pattern of set, set width and heights, if that makes any sense. But again, you can embellish this with a lot of things. I'm, I'm sort of under a time crunch here, so I didn't have, I didn't have time to do everything I would have wanted to do. Uh, I think I may try to add a ladder that goes down in here. I thought about a tea light, but that's not really part of the adventure I have for these guys. Um, I thought about making a, a sec, a, <coughs> excuse me, a second floor in here that could be accessible, but 
they're not actually intending to be defending this. They're going to be sort of attacking it. So um, you will need a mix of greenery if you want to get this effect of grass and stuff. Get some small pebbles and stones and some greenery. I want to give a quick shout out to Bethany with Atlantic Dental Supply. Uh, she provided me with these rocks. These are actually foam, and she gets them as packing material for some of the um, supplies that she sells. She sells paint, uh, she sells molding um, materials, the powder, the things like that. Uh, I'll put a link to her shop in the video description. But she provided these little stones, which absolutely, they have a, they have a sheen to them when you look at them in certain ways, and they look so realistic. So Bethany, you nailed it. That was just an incredible bag. Uh, I don't. I put it away, but uh, just a, she gave me a bag of it, and it was just waste that would have been thrown in the garbage. And she figured out how to let's recycle it, and maybe they could use it for terrain. Um, but anyway, there you go. Uh, one tower ready for a D and D game for my oldest and uh, three of his friends on Saturday. I'm kind of looking forward to it. I haven't run a D and D game in a long time. Uh, so it'll be, it'll be fun. They are very excited about it and I'm excited for them. If you, uh, if you end up making something like this, please do share a photo, uh, over on my Facebook page. The Tabletop Engineer is the Facebook gr group. Uh, I would love to see your take on this. There's so many ways this could be done. You could do it taller. You could do it wider. Uh, you could, you could add some balconies out here if you wanted to. Add some flags, what have you. But, uh, but yeah, I would love to see your take on this if you if you decide to make one. All right, I'll be back in a week with another crafting video. If you have any questions about this, post them in the comments below and I'll do my best to address them. Uh, this is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. Thanks for joining me and I'll be back next week. Everybody, take care.